Hi everybody, this is Gad Saad for The Sad Truth. Yesterday I came across a sentence from a fellow Psychology Today blogger. Uh, her name is uh, Regina Bareka, where she said the following. Forgive me as I avert my eyes to read the exact quote. Uh, she stated, There are no real differences between men and women except what we have constructed and imagined in our various cultures. So this is the old argument that is quite prevalent in the social sciences that all or most sex differences short of our genitalia are due to social construction. And this is a premise that uh, is a bit waning, uh, thankfully, but is certainly the, probably the dominant premise in many areas of the social sciences. And it goes back to a hundred years of uh, certainly feminist thinking. So here's, uh, for example, Charlotte Perkins Gilman, a very famous uh, feminist and uh, sociologist who said there is no female mind the brain is not an organ of sex as well speak of a female liver so she's basically arguing that uh, it is absolutely ludicrous to somehow sex type our brains there is no such thing as a quote male brain or quote female brain uh, a brain is a brain right uh, this is quite an astonishing statement from a biological perspective humans by definition are sexually dimorphic species now, we're sexually dimorphic in, in that not only are we physically, phenotypically different, men on average are bigger than women. The other species, uh, that dimorphism is much more pronounced. For example, if you take uh, sea lions, uh, the males are you know, profoundly bigger than females. In other species, you have a sex role reversal. In many spider species, it is the females that are very, very large and the males are much, much smaller. Think, for example, the cassowary bird in Australia. It is the females who are aggressive, who are territorial, who fight other females for access to males, and so on and so forth. And so part of the way that we define characteristics of a species is whether they are sexually dimorphic or not, and in which direction. And humans, by definition, are sexually dimorphic. Now, of course, that applies to morphological and phenotypic features, right? size for example but it also applies to our brains so our emotional systems our perceptual systems our cognitive systems would have evolved to have some sex differences and on many traits and on many phenomena to have no differences and the direction of that difference would vary as a function of sex specific evolutionary forces so to argue that uh, sex differences are a social construction not only goes against the most basic folk wisdom that people have, but it goes against every imaginable uh, scientific truth on the matter that exists today. And as I wrote yesterday in, uh, on my psychology, on my um, public Facebook page, if you took a physicist uh, who was teaching a class, a professor of physics, and you had him lecturing about how the sun revolves around the earth, uh, people would be outraged because that is factually incorrect. Or if you had a, a historian arguing that Jews were the original inhabitants of uh, uh, the Americas, uh, people would, again, uh, look at that with uh, quite a bit of suspicion. Or if a number theorist argues that, argued that prime numbers are defined as those numbers that are divisible by five, uh, then again, we would have serious concern about his, his or her ability to teach, if not understand, mathematics. By the same token, uh, it is unacceptable for people to, uh, you know, have a right to their own facts. You can have a right to your opinion, but there are facts, and it is absolutely a fact that uh, men and women have certain biological-based evolved differences. Uh, that is about as clear as the existence uh, of gravity. Now, I think one of the reasons why these kinds of outlandish positions are taken stems from the fact that many feminists believe that uh, if you don't argue that men and women are indistinguishable, it makes it easier for the, quote, sexist status quo to, uh, uh, to, to still exist. And so by arguing that we are indistinguishable, it makes it easier to combat institutionalized sexism. 
well, that's a lunatic position to, to hold uh, because uh, no one contests the fact that, or at least no sane person contests the fact that we should be uh, equal under the law. Uh, but being equal under the law doesn't mean that we have to be biologically indistinguishable. So I hope that at some point we will stop hearing the canard that men and women are indistinguishable short of the sexist patriarchal conspiracy that creates these differences. That's the sad truth for you. It might hurt you, but you can't hide away from it. See you soon. Ciao.